So guys, we are sitting back with another video of Katia V5, and in this video, I will show you how to design the plane. And this is the continuation of GST series. So let's get started. First of all, I would like to tell you that in last two videos, I've already covered up how to align the three views of the picture using two ways. One of them was Photo Studio, and the other one was using Immersive Sketch. So I'm just going to continue with aligning using the Immersive Sketch. And now we can finally start to draw or sketch out the sketches through these three planes so that we actually have something to work with in order to make the generative shape design surfaces. So let's get started. First of all, you will come underneath the plane, plane one, which is the part that we are working with. And now we can actually start designing. So there are two to three ways of using sketches as well. Normally, we have our part design, which we can frequently use. If not, there's other option of freestyle that we can see under shape, which is right here, freestyle. And this is also the other option that we can use. So 3D Curve is a very essential tool that is a great tool to have. So like the 3D Curve will give you more accurate presentation of how and why should we use 3D curve over a simple sketch? I will show you the difference as well. Along with that, we will go ahead and see what's the best way of making the fuselage and what are the different ways of making such. It's going to be a relatively longer video of about 15 to 20 minutes. So without wasting time, let's get started. So I will just start with the part design first. So when I go back to part design, now I have features. Here, I can make the fuselage simple as just by clicking the normal plane and start designing right away without any delay. I just need to make sure that I have my grid off because otherwise it's just going to snap everywhere. And now I can simply sketch through and trace using the tangent curves or a simple curve. And then I can Trace the entire fuselage shape, starting from here, here. If I want to go in one shot, sure, it's my option. It's my choice at end of the day, that the way you actually want to design it. And then coming all the way through is basically a straight line. So you can follow that using a profile as well. If you want to, you can use it from here where this ends. Coming all the way straight. Some, something like that and I can make it tangent with this tangency but it moved the entire thing other way so I mean there are definitely different, different ways of making the same thing so it all depends on an individual how one wants to design it I'm just showing you one way of designing it right so you can make either with a simple curve, with a spline, and then follow the track and try to make it as close as possible. So let's say if this is what I, I'm okay with, I say that this sounds like a good sketch. What are the other options of actually making a sketch using it? So this is one way, all right? I'm just going to show it here, which is sketch one. This is with the 3D curve. Um, this is with a simple sketch. I'm going to hide it for now. So now let's try how to use the 3D curve as well. You go to shape, go to freestyle. Now you have option of using 3D sketch or 3D curve, but the default setting for 3D curve, we need to make sure that on which plane do we want to use that 3D curve and how do we align or assign that plane is by using the compass. So we use the compass, schedule it on here. So it by default became green. It means that it already selected this given plane. So now when I click normal, first of all, I'm just going to click normal to make my view and life easier. And now I can click on 3D curve. So you will see that it has creation type. The most common one, we are going to use it through point and control points. I will tell you the difference. And Disable geometry detection as well. 
So first things first, so through point and control point, I can tell you what exactly the difference is. So let's say if I just simply click on through point and start making the design right here. So this is through point, right? And disable geometry detection is also off. So when I zoom out, you can see that because I've already assigned this particular plane on which I would like to draw, it have automatically chosen it, and hence there is no confusion that where I want to draw. So now if I just want to continue, I can do the same thing. Just keep click, simply just keep clicking. And one thing you might have observed that 3D curve is more accurate and more precise and is less tangenty in comparison to the simple spline, given that the points in this are going to be automatically automatically tamed into each other. So you can see that even if I want to make modifications, it's relatively way easier. Even if I want to add a point somewhere, so let's say if I want to remove a point and or add a point, if I want to add a point somewhere here, I can simply click on insert a point and click on the line where I want to add a point and let's say I want to add somewhere here. So there, there we go. We have a point. And simply we can adjust relatively easier, make adjustments, make mobility. So you see, it's easier to track the sketch that we try to follow using these features versus a normal handmade sketch. It's easy to make modifications. That's the other way of saying it. I will add one more point right here. Insert a point. There we go. And try to make it as close as possible. There we go. Well, to me, it looks close enough that I have a sketch that is very close to the actual surface and I'm, I'm satisfied with it. So now you can see that there's a massive difference between this and if I'm going to turn back on between the other one. Because if I zoom in closely, you can see a huge difference between 3D curve and a normal sketch one. Sorry about my computer is lagging a bit. So you, you can see that this one, this is the previous one that we made, which is sketch one, have very discrepancy. It's not consistent. But the new one with the 3D curve is very consistent. So none of them is wrong. But when you compare in terms of details, then I would personally recommend using 3D curve if you know how to use it properly and if you understand the concepts of using it. So I'm just going to follow through with 3D curve. I'm going to hide sketch one for now and just use the 3D curve as my main curve to work with. So I've already made one sketch that is from the side view of it. So now I can use the, side, the top view to make the other one to trace the entire profile of the fuselage. And then we can see what are the other ways of making it. So as we can go through it, we have different options once again to choose from. We have one sketch which is on the side of the plane. Either way, either we can use the front view to make sections of the fuselage and then use multi section surface, or we can use the top plane, which is right here, to actually make the top sketch of it and use features like sweep or there are multiple features that we can use in order to just close up the surface of the side and the top plane, which will appear to look similar to what the shapes look like. So we will go step by step, one by one, and we will definitely cover all of them. In this one, I'm just going to keep it simple. So this is going to be using multi-section. And how we are going to do this is by having different, different sections of it. Normally, with when you have these kind of planes, they come up with different different sections. If they don't, you can simply make them individually if you want to. How do you do it? You can have different planes offset with respect to the original plane, and then you simply offset and then make each section that is seen or it appears to be close enough 
to the real one and then you simply join them together. To do so, you would need a top profile of the side view as well as the lower end of the side view as well, by which you can connect both the profiles to the sections. I will show you right now how to do that. So we have already designed the top profile of the side view. Similarly, we are also going to do the lower profile of the side view. How we are going to do it? We will make another 3D sketch using the same compass, attaching it right here. I'm going to do it normal too. Click once again on it so that we don't lose focus and then click on 3D curve. In this case, I want to make sure that it starts from the point. So you see, because it's through point, it automatically snatched there. So I want it to be specified. If it's control point or if it's control point, then it's simply going to be, or if I click on disable geometry detection, then it's not going to detect that point at all. But I want for the first point to be detected and it should be control point. So I'm going to press on control point. I've already selected the plane. So now I want to disable the geometry detection because I want it to be specific to this particular plane, the one that I'm designing on. And here we go. Then I started designing. I can also make sure by just moving a bit that am I on the right plane? If not, then you can make changes accordingly. Right now, I'm just going to trace the entire sketch. Close, as close as possible from my eyesight. Try to have least points where there is a straight surface so that there's no accumulation of more significant points. And try to have a little bit more points around the corners or edges. So now I, I know that in order to make or connect them, I would need two ways. Either I can extend the lower one to as much as possible or the top one slightly above. I would make changes to the top one. I'm just going to extend the top one somewhere here where I see. So this we call the exploration. So I have just extended the sketch so that it appears to be as normal as possible. I'm going to add a new point as well. Well, in this case, I would just need to double click on it and just extend this. Now what I can do is I can disable geometry and actually compile it. Click OK. And you see. Oh. So both the sketches have combined and they are on the same plane as well. What I've done is it's I've just extended both the sketches so that they can meet somewhere. And now what I can do is now I can actually use multi, uh, multi, multiple sections in order to have multi-surface feature to be used. So we have the top one, we have the side one. We can just hide the top view for now because we basically don't need it that much and now what i'm going to do is i'm simply going to offset a few of the planes the best way would be me going to shape and generate shape design because now that's the main thing that we are going to use i'm going to save the progress for now and now we can simply offset some planes and start working with it we are going to use multi-section which is right here multi-section surfaces for multi-section surfaces i'm just going to show you what we actually need we need sections and we need a guiding curve so the sections the one that we are going to design right now are going to be the main sections and the guiding curves are going to be these two guiding curves that we, we have just used to connect them sometimes it also show error because we have joined both of them here so that might be an issue but i will show you how to overcome through that as well but i'm just going to continue for now by making the sections for sections you will offset planes you will double click on planes Simply offset a plane where you find it's going to be closest. So I'm just going to offset somewhere here by the first end of the fuselage. Similarly, I'm going to offset the second one with respect to this one somewhere here. That looks fine to me. 
another one i'm going to offset around here and then one more let's say around here but this is going to get shorter the distance is going to get shorter and shorter and the last one goes somewhere here as i can see if i want to get a better view i'm just going to click on normal too so that i have a better understanding of where the planes are actually being aligned as you can see that they are slightly off so i'm just going to adjust them individually offset this slightly and boom there we go all of them are automatically adjusted this one i can just move slightly back that looks fine there we go now basically we have planes aligned properly there we go right here we have different different planes aligned now the beauty of this i guess we have planes we have two sketches as well now we want to make sketch on each and every profile either we can just have a guess how to do this or we can actually make a fill surface just like we did using the photo studio if we need to and then try to align the views accordingly and try to make each and every sketch precisely for now because this picture doesn't allow us to have different sections so we are just going to follow through what we think is close enough for this picture otherwise in mostly 3d views we have the sections along with it so which makes it very easy for us to actually align the sections i'm just going to show you what actually is going to look like the result is going to be the same the only difference is going to be that we are not going to be using the sections that generally are there within the three views that can actually help us to guide in a way that it's more closer to what really the profile of the fuselage should look like but anyways i'm just going to continue now what's going to happen is let's say if i'm going to make a position sketch so this is the position sketch right i'm going to double click on it so this is the reference and this is okay position sketch projection point we need to click on projection point for this we need to have a projection point in order to make a position sketch as we already know so now what we are going to do is because i already have a plane and i have two sketches already built as a guiding curve so i'm just going to click on intersect and see wherever they intersect there will be a point constructed so this is going to be my first element and second element is going to be my plane itself when i click on preview it will show me a point right here that i can use similarly i will click ok and i'm okay with it similarly i will do the same thing with the bottom sketch as well with the plane click preview i have the second sketch as well so now what i'm going to use it i'm going to use these two points as my extremes or outliers as we say for making the profile of the fuselage so my sketch is going to start from here it will follow through and join till here because these are two extreme limits that i can use as a reference so now i can use a position sketch now i do have instead i just needed one point but now we have two so we can use any one of those but i'm just going to use the top one as a projection point and click okay so now it will take me that okay this is what you want this is the profile that you will trace but for my safety what i'm going to do is i'm going to project the point at the bottom as well i'm going to click on projection and i'm going to click on this point but i want to make this as a construction element so i'm just going to make it construction i'm going to click on construction element and click okay in that sense i know for a fact that the point that i just projected is a construction element so i'm not now i'm going to press escape a couple of times so that is deselected and now i can just turn off the construction in that sense i know that i the construction element that i already made which is that point is not going to interfere 
with the real sketch that I'm going to design. Sometimes there might be an issue that you accidentally press that particular button right here and then forgot to make it as a construction element which is going to give you a lot of trouble later on because it's going to be so minute that you don't even realize but it would exist and it will show error again and again whenever you're going to make multiple uh, multi-section surface. So just be very particular about small things as well. So now we have two points, two segments, two limit points as well. So now I'm just going to make it normal to and try to follow or trace this sketch as close as possible. So normally the fuselage is it's going to be slightly bulged inwards, like starting out. It starts bulging outwards as we go all the way. So like even if the top view, as you can see, from the front, it's slightly shallower and then it gets thicker and it stays consistent and then again it falls down. So the thickness starts with a slower slope. And then it goes thicker and it stays consistent and then it falls down to a lesser slope again. We are going to try to trace the same method in our mind and do the same. So the first one, first section is going to be slightly slimmer than the other ones. Then the second and the third one and the fourth plane and the fifth plane are going to be smaller sections once again. So I'm going to follow. And this is what I'm doing because we don't have accurate sections. If we do have access to all the sections, then, then that's a different story. Then we don't need to assume that we can actually make those sections properly. I'm just, I'm just going to use spline because it's not that big of a deal now. I'm going to use this. So this is close enough. And there we go. We have this. If we want, we can do this as well. A little bit of playing around to make it more appealing. So now you might have observed that why have I kept it slightly smaller than the actual art. I could have made it all the way around, going all in. But I'm saving that profile for the upcoming planes. So th this is my first section. I'm going to exit out. That looks fine to me. So now the second one, I can make it slightly bigger. Or even if I want to make the first one, it's all up to me. At the end of the day, it's not that big of a deal. I could have made all of three around the same size, around the same radii, but I just want to make it slightly, slightly smaller for the first one. And the second one is going to be slightly bigger and so on. So now I can do the same thing for the second one. I'm going to do it slightly faster now because I've already explained how to do it. Position sketch again. I need to do the interference. Interference of first and second element. I get the point. Similarly, first and the lower and plane itself. I got the point. I have two points getting there. I can do the projection if I need to. Implicit projection point. Get the projection point. Click OK. Come back. Now I can trace the entire profile properly. First things first. Use the lower point as a projection point first and click on construction element, then click OK. Right, then click anywhere, click escape a couple of times and you get out of the sketch in terms of construction. Now you can start building the main sketch. So now I'm going to use as close as possible the trace. So now I have this, 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 this. And this, there we go. If I zoom in a bit. So now I have a little bit of sketches I need to play with. Try to make it a little, little more accurate if possible. There we go. There we go. Looks fine. So I want to make it slightly smaller. Yeah, that looks fine to me. Yep, exit out. Looks good. Control S for now is just to save. I'm going to do the same thing for the upcoming ones as well. Intersection. Intersection of first element with the other. Preview. Okay, looks good. Second element. And the plane. Two points. Projection point. We got the projection point. This is the plane. 
can place it to projection point click on that projection point click ok you get into the sketch i'm going to project the point once again the lower point is going to be projected click ok don't forget to click on construction and i'm going to do the same oh see this is what happens sometimes so let's say if i click on it click on projection click ok while it's activated then you have to click on construction and then only it will change into construction otherwise it's just going to stay the same as a solid sketch and it's going to interfere later on i'm going to do the same thing make a sketch close enough to that that was real maybe slice smaller if you need to the rest it all depends on you so that's fine looks fine control s I can save it, do the same thing for these two as well. So now, because the sketch is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller every time, because it's narrowing down through the path. Intersection of the plane with respect to the top line, preview, same thing again, again. I mean, it's a repetitive thing. And I'm going to do it for the last one as well. This sketch looks okay. And the same thing goes for the top one as well. Looks good. And there we go. So I made these two. And now I'm going to have the projection point for this plane using the projection point to be this one right here. Click OK. So now I'm converting the lower point as a projection. This one right here. And right here. This one. Click OK. Make it to be construction. Oh, make it as a construction element. Escape. Construction off. Normal to. And now we have the upper limit as this one. And then we have right here. So this is the lower limit. So now we need to make adjustment to the sketches so that it appears symmetrical all the way. So now this is the lower point. So it will start somewhere from here, it will go all the way till here. So that needs to be more close. Slightly something like this. It's going to look something like this. And it's going to look something like oh, it's right here. My bad. I misjudged it. So the point is going to appear from here. Go till here, come till here, come till here. Come till here and it will come here all the way. Exit out. There we go. We have another sketch. Control S. Try to do the same thing <clears throat> for next time as well. The last one, last but not the least, projection point. Click here, click OK. Come inside the sketch. Again, try to make the projection of it, projection of the point. Construction element, click OK. Do not mess up with the limit because it's really possible to actually make a mistake on this one. So like projection point, click on the point, construction element, click OK. Click anywhere, click escape, close it off. Right? Just keep it simple. Now do the same thing. Couple of points here and exit it. Exit it. This seems slightly to be a little bit thicker or fatter. I can just make it a little, little bit slimmer. Mm -hmm. Something like this, right? Slightly. A slight difference between both of them. Now we have all the sketches that we would need. I'm going to save it for now. Right. So now we can actually start making the sketches if we need to. So now there are different different fuselage sketches that we actually need. The main one are going to be from here. So you see the guide curve. It starts from the very top, from the very front, and goes all the way till the back. We don't really need the entire one. We just need the guiding curve to be from starting of this sketch or the this section to the end section. That would be good enough for us to actually make it work. 
and then we can separately make the nose cone and the tail separately by using different different features like sweep or even we can use blend features if we need to so the choice is all up to you let's try what happens if we try to use these two as a guiding cup as it is right so we have multiple section right here they are asking for sections make sure the arrows are pointing in the similar direction right and I'm going to use guiding curve as the top one and the bottom one. Click preview. See, it still gave the same answer to the same problem, to the same question. So now you see that it is what we are looking for. Although the, the guiding curve is extended, it's not going to matter or have a difference at all. The only thing that's going to make a difference is sometimes when the Direction of arrow is different. When you click preview, it might show an error that okay, it's not possible to do it, but most of the time it's not going to be a problem somehow because these are basically the tangency it shows that with what with respect to what the surface is tangent to. So basically, right now the tangency goes across the surface, and similarly, it's coming towards the surface from the bottom. So that's why the curve appears to be fine. It can be other way around as well. The both arrows could be both in one side, but then the tangency, um, tangency will appear to be coming from the top towards the surface. And similarly, from the bottom towards the surface. So it's basically clockwise and anti-clockwise. Right now it's anti-clockwise, anti-clockwise, anti-clockwise. If I would change the circle, it's going to be clockwise from the top and anti-clockwise. So it's going to contradict. It works sometimes, but most of the times it doesn't so it's better to just keep a habit that both the directions are opposite to each other and they are in the same alignment with each other then it's definitely going to work so we have the first surface made so this is how you use section surfaces i'm just going to save it quickly similarly you have the bottom one as well so this one there are two to three different ways of making the same thing we can close it or here if you want you could have made another section and then made it separately made the, the front nose to be completely separate from the first ones i mean it all depends on what an individual is looking for so now let's say if i want to offset one more plane similarly i'm going to offset plane similar to this and it's going to be around here so like normal to this particular plane but it's going to be somewhere here so that we can just make a nose cone using a blend or a tangent to surface so i'm going to do the same thing once again interference using the top and the bottom click ok do the same thing for the bottom as well click ok there we go Now I'm going to make another sketch, another projection sketch using this and this as a projection point, not part of region, projection point. There we go. This is the projection point. This looks fine. I know that I would need to use the lower one, lower point, construction, click OK. There we go. Escape and out. Try to make it further. Try to make the grasp and then we are going to make a circle right here. There we go. There we go. Looks fine. Similarly, I can use just like I did here. I can add one more section if I want to. That is going to be this section right here. Oh, because that section has been built later on. I'm going to delete this and add that into the section surface. So this is going to be the first section now. This is going to be the second one, third one, fourth one, fifth one, and the sixth one. Let's see if it's going to be a problem to that. There we go. Looks fine. It has no problem with that. So now we are just left with the tail cone and the nose cone. 
So now there are two to three different ways again of building it. First of all, the nose cone is slightly moved out. I'm just going to make a little bit of modification to make it slightly more accurate with respect to it. Looks fine to me now. Yep. Similarly, slightly on the top edge as well. Slight, slightly out. Just making it appear to be more precise. I mean, it, it will work fine, but it's just like, I sometimes just overdo things. So now what I can do is I can extract. Extract is a very powerful feature as well. So like, because th this is one sketch and I want to use just this part of it, not the entire sketch. So I can just extract a given feature, a given sketch with respect to what I just need in order to replicate and use it again and again instead of interfering with the original sketch which is sketch one. So let's say if I want to propagate, so this is a bag option. You can multi-select on this feature. So sketch one and the sketch two, I want to extract. When I'm going to close it and click OK, it will appear that nothing actually changed. But in reality, the change would be that now there is a duplicate of sketch one on top of that one. So sketch one duplicate will be overlapping on the sketch one itself. So now you see extract one and sketch one are on the exact position on the same position. So now if I want to make changes and if I try to trim this line, only the extract will get trimmed, but not the actual sketch one. So let's say if I want to trim this line because I just need the front half of it from here till here to actually make a blend with this section so that I can just close the top surface. I'm going to hide this right now so that it makes my life easier. So I want to element to cut. It says this line and it says cutting element. I'm going to consider this point. So now you see that it initially selected the entire line and now we are just left with this orange part and this is what we are looking for. And I'm going to click OK. Similarly, I'm going to trim one more or split one more bottom line with respect to this point and it already got trimmed. But you see that this line still exists. This is sketch one, the actual sketch one, but this is after trimming the extraction one and extraction two. So now we have these two. Now what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to join it, joining this half and this half. And I'm going to click OK. That looks fine. That looks good. So now what I'm going to do is either I can use blend. So how I'm going to blend it is I'm going to use extrusion. So this is another feature that is very helpful. So extrusion is like this is the sketch that I provide. So this can be used as a profile. So I can simply click on it and it will show a surface that is going to get extruded. It's something like pad in the 3D part design, but is in just going to be sketch based and it can work easily on open sketches as well. So right now this is an open sketch. So I just, I was just able to extract a profile or a surface, which I can use as a tangent to make a blend. It's going to show me an error or warning that if payload profile is extruded using default, it may impact update stability of extrude feature, which is not a big concern to us to be honest. So now we have a surface that we can use as a tangent. So this sketch already have a tangent surface, which is the actual multi-section that we used. So now we can actually make it work through blend. So now we go to blend. So there are different features once again, there's right here, blend is right here. So now it says first curve and support. So like I can use first curve and it's asking for a support. First support is going to be this one. Then second curve and a support. Click preview. There we go. So it automatically adjusted in such a way that it will look as close as possible and the surface is going to be tangent to each other so it's not a big deal to us. So now the only thing that you should be concerned about is how accurate the profile that is pre-made is. So you can see that right now it's slightly bulging inwards. What you can actually do is you could have done it slightly outwards as well. But this is way too much, right? So what you can do is you can play with some numbers now. 
you want the profile to be slightly thicker so you can play with the tension so you can play with tension and see how it's going to affect so you see when i'm reducing the tension on the first one it appears to be slightly thicker if i reduce it to 0.5 it's appearing more and more closer and thicker on this side if i keep it to be 0.1 around 0.1 yeah, I mean, it appeared to be normal. What about if I change for the second tension? If I reduce this one, it appears to be slight, slight more and more every time I do make changes to it. Well, this one looks very close to how a fuselage actually should look like. And this is close enough to do, this, to do the thing that we are looking for. I'm just going to use this. I'm going to save it. You could have also used multi-section surface for the same. You could have made a guiding curve and did the same thing. So let's try that as well. I'm going to hide this blend for now. And let's say that I'm going to use multi-section. I have this surface. I have this surface. Can this work? There we go. So it used that as a curve. So now what if I want to justify that? The main guiding curve that it should be using is not some hypothetical assumption but a real sketch. So I'm just going to make another projection sketch on this point coming all the way till here and that can be used as a guiding curve as well. So I'm going to use a plane. I'm going to offset a plane pointing somewhere here on the point. Click OK. Make a projection point on this plane right and the projection point is going to be this one right here you can see the vertical and the horizontal appears to be somewhere there i'm going to just change reverse v well swap swap and reverse v there we go so now i can actually make use of it i can i can project this Use it as a construction element and try to use this as a tangent profile. Well, honestly speaking, I've not used this profile that much that I'm confident enough that will this thing work the way I want to, but it's just a shot that I'm giving right now. Right now, projection is going to be some different type. Not the second one, the third one. So the third one. Yeah, this is what I want. I don't want this. I can turn the entire one to a construction element and use it as a profile for, let's say, if tangency, if it works properly. Yeah, there we go. Tangents, okay, it is tangent there, but it's definitely not tangent here anymore. Okay, so this need to find a way out. So it's trying to make it tangent at the cost of that. I don't want that to happen. So this could be one way of doing things. Tangent, okay, see? The tangency is rejected every time I'm trying to use it. So, it's not that important to make it tangent precisely, but it's good practice if you could. For now, we are not able to, so that's not a big problem. Because this is just going to be a guide curve. First of all, I'm just trying to play and see if it actually works or not. So let's find out. So I have two profiles that I can use as a section, and then I have a guiding curve. So let's see if it actually works or not. Zoom in, zoom in, and then I'm going to use multiple section. Click here, click on the second one. Right, I can use this as a guide curve if it works. And it showed an error. It said that no, it's not going to use. You cannot use that as a guide curve. But let's try the other way around. If I use this as section one, 
but it's not going to use anyways never mind nope nope see nope see nope the right way is going to be this and this is just going to be that how you're going to adjust and you play with the arrows to see nope not this way what about this nope nope not gonna work no. so blend it is blend is the way to go you can try to do it with multi-section but it didn't work so blend is the way to use and it's working really good so it's not a big deal that why shouldn't we use it so if you see at it if you look at it so it's pretty close to what we actually wanted so similarly we can make the nose cone as well we can close it if we want to if we want to just keep, keep it open we can keep it open as well and later on find a way to close it i mean depends on what exactly you're looking for and how you want it so that's pretty much it for this video so this was basically showing you how to make sketches and start working with either 3d curves or simple projection curves or making different different sections using the plane and also along with using projection point for each and every construction of elements in terms of making the fuselage along with the guiding curves so that we can use the multi-section feature in generative shape design in Katia v5 so thank you so much for watching in upcoming videos we will continue with the same plane and we, we will be working towards more or more specific features like vertical stabilizer the wings the horizontal stabilizer and few of the other elements that are really crucial for you to understand as we go through the process i will show you more and more different ways of how to use it how to use different features so this was using multi multi-section surface which is right here and there you could have done the same thing using sweep function as well so i will cover that in upcoming videos so stay tuned and do not forget to subscribe my channel thank you so much for watching take care bye